Hi, this is Danny Daniels in Real Conversations. I do not know today's date. All I know is we've made a little bit of history. We had a snow day last night. All the snow. Here in the month of May. And I hear that this is the biggest amount of snow that we've gotten in 44 years in the month of May on this day. So... That's pretty impressive. I'm going to sit my glasses in this flower pot. I was asked the other day, why do you take your glasses off when you make videos? I'll tell you why. Because I am nearsighted. So when I hold my phone up in front of my face, it's too close and I can't see. So if I was farsighted, then I wouldn't be able to see. So having my phone up this close wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> I have been stimulated so many different ways today that I, I'm not even sure what my talking point will be. But I've gotten used to making these videos because I have some fans. Oh my gosh. I have like three fans, y'all, for real, for real. So I make these videos for, for my ladies. Hey, what y'all doing? <laughs> Another thing they ask me is, um, Daddy, who be there with you when you be making the videos? Because you just be laughing. <laughs> I, I just laugh. I laugh, okay? Stop judging. Jeepers, creepers. Anyway. <laughs> I love my girl. So what? Does that, what does this mean? I have like, what, six fans and three of them are me, myself, and I. Who do you raise the roof? Anyway. <laughs> I was stimulated this morning by a couple of people with some questions. And one gentleman good friend of mine he calls me he says you know what I wanted to have a conversation with someone with good sense and I'm like who can I call oh Danny <laughs> what was his situation his situation was it much like myself you know we desire to learn new things you know we want to glean information from wherever we can, whether that's watching TV, reading a newspaper, reading a book, going to the movies, whatever. You can always be open to receive new knowledge. And we know, he and I, and I'm sure a few other people do, but I can't attest to what other people do, but I know for a fact that if you stop learning, or if you choose to just stop learning, that's a form of suicide. You've committed you're, you know, how did I say it before? It's like spirit there. You can commit spiritual suicide, mental suicide, physical suicide. There's just so many different ways you can kill yourself. And if you just choose to be reprobate and of an obtuse mind and stunt your knowledge, you killed yourself. I have no desire to do that. The day I stop learning is the day I'll be dead. <laughs> so and he is of the same type of mentality. So, you know, we vibe off each other. He called me today in his humility because that's one thing about people who are sincere and want to learn, seek higher elevation of knowledge. You have to stay in a position of humility because if you start getting a big head, then you get a God complex and you think that you know everything, nobody can teach you nothing. Kind of, you just kind of trump yourself, you know. I have the biggest words, and I'm I know the best people, and all of that. And we know better because we see evidence of how you're living and how you act, and we hear the words that come out of your mouth. So that God that you think you are, that you created in yourself, you're wrong. <laughs> and when a person really is empowered, really has any kind of knowledge, you can hear it when they speak. They're humbled. They will tell you, I don't know everything. I'm still learning. All I can, all anyone can do is impart what knowledge they have at the time that they have it. They can only give you what they have. And since nobody has everything, you can always receive more from somebody else. You can even learn from children. I do it all the time. I'm always learning from everybody. I, I watch the Game of Thrones and I learn from that. <laughs> The whole thing, I'm watching the movie, and I was like, oh, he's saying something right there. Yeah. Because Jon Snow denied his birthright, 
He said he didn't want it. He didn't want to be the king, but that was his birthright. He chose to set his birthright down. So Tenarius, the little midget man, he's talking to John and he's like, not the, ter I don't know what his name is, Starbuck T. Anyway, so he's like, look, you see Danny, not me, Danny, Daenerys on this uh, Game of Thrones. <laughs> you see what she's doing. You see what she's done. You've heard her speak. Are you still willing to let her rule when you have the birthright? So John is like, well, that's my queen. And he goes, okay. So since John wasn't here and Tyrion, Tyrion had to put it to him like this. He had to get personal. Sometimes for people to understand you have to give them something that they can identify with to relate to what you're saying. So he said, okay, you can't receive that. Let me submit this to you, John. Your sisters are not in agreement with your queen. Your queen will have everyone bend the knee and impose her will upon everyone else. No one has a will. There's only her will. So if you, if she talked about she wanted to break the will. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. She wanted to establish her own will. That's what Daenerys was trying to do. So Tyrion said, are you going to release her upon your sisters? Now, I'm paraphrasing. That ain't how it went down. <laughs> it made John think. He's like, wait a minute. Nah, because this mug is tripping. I, I got to do what I got to do. So he did what he had to do. And when I was talking to this young man who called me this morning, because he was upset about this woman who is the mother of five children, and she's always talking about all she needs is God. They were talking about her children going to college, and she was rebelling against that, saying, no, 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 all they need is God. And he's like, oh, no. For him, this man I was talking to, that's an abusive situation to deny your kids higher education. Plus, it's something that they need. And... He was asking me, you know, do you think I was too hard on her? I said, no, you were perfectly well within your right. And it was necessary for you to admonish her because sometimes we we need that. And I didn't think he was being too harsh on her. And I don't think she's hopeless because for the little bit that he knows, the little bit that I know, what he imparted on, upon her was a jewel. I don't necessarily lean into the knowledge of the the Bible the way I used to when I was younger because I've grown now, but there's still some good stuff in that Bible. There's still some principles that cannot be denied. One of those principles is that the word of God will not go out and return void. So he planted a seed in this girl and he told her to pick up the book of Enoch. And to read that, and he asked her, her some questions. She's like, well, you know, if God can hear you, do you think God can hear me? And she said affirmative. So if God can hear you and me, can he hear all of us? If, we, if we're all crying out at the same time, can he hear all of us? And she was like, I don't know. So what I submitted to him is, is based on everything that I've been receiving in my ear is that She's not hopeless. Her children aren't hopeless. When I was a child, I grew up with no religion. My mother was Jehovah Witness at a time. And they came in and told her she'd have to take all the pictures off our wall because you can't have graven images in your house. And then they told her that if one of us were sick and we needed a blood transfusion, we couldn't get it because, uh, you know, Jehovah Witnesses didn't believe in that. My mother shunned that religion. She's like, y'all need to get up out of my house. Gone. <laughs> So she was done with that. Well, we weren't lost. We weren't hopeless. And, you know, I, I told her, I said, her children aren't lost. All is not lost. Because at the point in our lives, me and my sisters, having no more exposure to religion because of my mother's negative experience, my oldest sister went out and she had a revelation and an experience which she brought back into the house. And she would sit and tell us stories I ah, love her stories. Woman was just a fantastic storyteller. I said was, but actually she still is. She's a fantastic storyteller. I love listening to her stories. And in that, because of her experience, my older sister, I was able to find God. And all of us at some point in our lives was able to come to Christ and 
receive him in our lives as adults. Also, my mother was able to receive Christ as an adult. And there's something else that happened in our family when my sister came at us with her spirituality. We did not greet each other in love. We just, you know, we were just there. We started to acknowledge one another, and we still do it to this day. We greet each other with a kiss. We, good to see you. And that love, that affection is very important. It's something that we didn't have, and because of my older sister, we now have that. Whether we're estranged now or not, or we're getting along great or whatever, when she introduced that to us, it stuck. So I'm like, you planted a seed in that young lady. She's, she's told you she's going to go read it. She probably will. And then, you know, you did present to her a different perspective. And that's all we can do. Because at the end of the day, we are all servants serving one another. None of us is better than any other. None of us know it all. We all need one another. And when we start working and moving in a way that we are dismissive towards other, we get chaos, which is what is presented from the White House today. It's chaos. It's out of order. We all need each other. We all have a part to play, a role to play. Whenever we start operating with a lack of compassion and an unwillingness to understand and allowing our minds to become obtuse because the situation doesn't affect us, we've got some problems. And it will eventually affect your home. It might not touch you now, but it's going to touch you. I read an article the other day where this man, it's a Caucasian man, he's upset. He voted for Trump. And now he's upset because he fell in love with an illegal immigrant. And he fell in love with this woman, married her, and they have a child. He voted for Trump. His reasoning, he said, was because he wanted to reverse Roe versus Wade. Roe versus Wade. That was why he supported Trump, because he wanted to see that reversed and undone, which is ridiculous, and I don't believe that to be true. Because to undo Roe versus Wade means you don't give a damn about women. But you claim you're upset because your wife was taken from you under the Trump administration, and so now you don't support Trump. You're an idiot, because you thought that it wouldn't affect you, your decision to vote in Trump, because you wanted to make America great again. What he wanted was white rule. And so that's why he voted for Trump. It was clear in this article as I was reading it, his intentions and his purpose for voting for Trump. And he thought because he was white, they wouldn't come and touch his house. But that was one of the first things that happened. So for the past two years, he has been raising his child separate from his wife. And his wife sees her son via video. And now he wants to act like you're upset. You can't be upset when you brought that damnation into your own home. When you invite evil into your own home and let it dwell with you, you cannot say that you were upset by your reality. You created that. You're your own torment. So that's something to think about. That's, you know, that's a real conversation. This is real talk. <laughs> So you let me know what you think about that. And, you know, if you have some wisdom to impart on me, please, by all means, impart it. If you have any questions, please, by all means, ask me questions. I'm Danny Daniels. You can follow me on Facebook under Danny Daniels Author. Actually, on Facebook, it's Author Danny Daniels, and that's how you can find me. But anyway, anyhow, anywho, which I got from my sister cousin. And I call my cousin my sister cousin because... Her dad and my dad were brothers, and her mom and my mom are sisters. So she's my sister cousin. <laughs> and she always says, anywho, anyhow, and all of that. See, I just forgot it. <laughs> so I have a great day. I'll talk to you later. And to my number, one, two, three fans, and me, myself, and I, love you. Carry on.